the bathroom window of our school, we could see into Manhattan. And so we looked out of the bathroom and we saw the air completely fill with smoke. And I just remember the fear that I felt in that moment. We were grappling with that immediate loss and not thinking about the loss to come. I grew up in Astoria, <laughs> in a neighborhood nicknamed Little Egypt. It is a North African working class immigrant neighborhood. And an older student came up to me and my friend and said, well, we're getting picked up because two planes crashed into a tower in, in the city. And I, I, re I remember that moment because it felt so surreal. Like, I was like, what are you talking? Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, planes don't crash into towers. And he was like, no, no, I'm serious. Like, go into the bathroom and look. And from the bathroom of the, like, the bathroom window of our school, we could see into Manhattan. And so we looked out of the bathroom and we saw the air completely fill with smoke. And I just remember the fear that I felt in that moment of just like, you know, and, and realizing the reason why we were being pulled out of school is because schools could be targeted, right? And like, we could be next and we don't know what's gonna happen. kids literally saying this was your fault right like this was your family's fault um and uh using using already words like terrorist right were being used and um and just feeling uh, from again I, i'm a child right and so i felt a deep sense of shame and i just remember how just like like horrifying that sense of shame is not only the fear right of being in the city and like experiencing a terror like having my city experience a terrorist attack and, and you know being a new yorker and also then being made to feel like it was my fault in some way like overnight people disappearing like you you know undocumented folks in particular but also green card holders and permanent residents and people who were fathers and uncles who I was used to seeing at the mosque and having these like really hush hush stories about why and like what went down right and people wanting to also separate themselves from from like each other and causing like this real sense of disruption and lack of trust the increased visibility of police presence right was a real thing and having like bomb squads and having just police in our neighborhood all the time and in our community spaces it's a new york city day it's like hustling bustling it's hot and just you know i remember just feeling someone grab for the back of my hijab and pull me trying to take the hijab from off my head turning around and just seeing hate in this person's eyes in a really like and just like feeling really small seeing like their whole body kind of hover of, over me and trying to shove them away trying to get away um struggling a bit but finally being able to do so and then going into this building that i was going to and just collapsing on the bathroom floor sobbing and doing that training in self-defense helped me build like it helped me feel safe in a time when it was very difficult to feel safe because there was so much going on politically it saddens me that i'm still teaching self-defense like as a self-defense instructor as an organizer i never want to organize i don't want to teach self-defense right like i want my community to be safe and the violence is constant the violence is ongoing the inequality is real, and we need to do this work from a place of survival. And that's where we're at.
I salute the Bush administration for balancing war with compassion, for dropping food as well as bombs. Even in war, we are showing a regard for human life and human rights that the Taliban will never know. The good news is that the Taliban's days are numbered and that some women from Afghanistan are fighting for their freedom. Is this like fear mongering that otherized and dehumanized and created this dual narrative of Muslim women oppressed, Muslim women also threat, right? That then leads to me walking down the street as a teenage girl and having my hijab being ripped off, right? Because not only is this man quote unquote liberating, but also I'm a threat, right? And he's scared of me and also he has hate in his eyes. And so you don't really like, what, like what are you doing is the question. And what is, how is this, who is this narrative benefiting? Because it definitely did not benefit me as a Muslim woman growing up in this country. It's a culmination of so many moments that led me to this point of jumping into something that really feels so beyond myself, right? And really feels rooted in the love that I have for my community and my neighborhood and the love that I have for the city um, and the vision for what is possible.